galactic civil war spreads across the sun. From the height of Coruscant to fiery Mustafa. To fight the evil empire, four people join the fray. These are the heroes of the Hydean Way. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Edge Studios' Age of Rebellion system. This is Arc 2, Episode 13 of The Hard Road. I'm Ben, and I'm the GM for this adventure, and I'm using they, them pronouns. And I'm Joy, I use she, her, and I'm playing Kedor Javik, a sharpshooter. I'm Erica, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm playing Norin Gremian, they, them, engineer, scientist. I'm Zach, I use they-them pronouns, and I'll be playing Shin Shazen, he's he-him pronouns, he's an infiltrator interrogator. And I'm Enri, I use she-they pronouns, and I'll be playing Isasel An, who uses she-her pronouns, and she's the ship pilot and captain. To learn more about our characters, we get one to ask the rest a question, and today's turn is Kiedra's. Oh, guys, I got a question for you guys. Super important. Okay, this is the most important question you will ever have to answer. What is your favorite snack when you go on a long journey? What? Are you kidding me? No, important? it's super important. Yes, super important. Don't you know? You have to know what to eat <laughs> and bring with you. So important. You know, I think she has a point. What is your favorite snack? I don't think it's so much the the food when you get there, but the food you you pick up along the way. And uh, the Bantha breakfast biscuit used to be one of my absolute favorites. Mm, oh, delicious! The, the biscuits were so. I, I I still have no idea what happened to those, but mm. but uh, used to be one of my favorites when I was on the job. You can find those anywhere. You know what you can find everywhere, though? Space waffles. No ship I can get on cannot have space waffles on it. There must be some. In fact, I think I need to go make some later. Eh, for dinner. Mm. You make a lot. What about you, Norn? Um. Well, I mean, salted cojonets are always good, I guess, but... When I get homesick, I like to make Muriel tea cakes. Ooh, I don't think I've ever had that. Uh, they're just they're pink and green, and um, they're just a nice little dessert. Like, I shall have to try it sometime. If I can, I like to eat roasted pork, but if I can't, then I like Mylorian fruit. Mylorian. Lor- Lorin? I can't say it, but it's very yummy. Melurun? Yes! Oh, so good! Noted. Easy to carry, easy to take. You can eat it anywhere. The delish. We start off with the camera looking out at a debris field. Off to the left, we can see the two-thirds intact wreck of a Ventator Star Destroyer. And as the camera pans over, we see a munificent class frigate in the near foreground with its conning tower up and glowing red as the camera then pans down and sees a painted spider on the side looking very much like a hark's face. The camera keeps panning in the same direction, going further and further to the right. We see a old CIS Vulture Starfighter droid come in for a landing, clomps down with four magnetic points that clomp, 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 clomp on the surface that we see before us. As we keep panning just a little bit, we see a small divot in the edge. As then, somehow in weightlessness, our droid L-185 jumps down and attaches themselves with magnetic feet as they start making their way to the large airlock. 
on the side of the cargo pod. The camera pans slightly to the left, and we see off in the distance as it zooms in, we see the soaring bantha out there with a small group of vulture droids that seem to be circling it in a slow dance around it. The camera then shifts out and follows the direction to the Soaring Bantha for a moment, then turns and we can see that the Munificent is docked to the Codfather at the airlock just behind the bridge. The camera comes down and then moves into the bridge where we can see the crew of the Codfather along with two droids, a T-Series tactical droid in tactical red and also a BX droid with a cape and a mustache. If I remember correctly, everyone's on the bridge? Yes. Yes. The droid leader of the Munificent is there. I'm figuring that they're decked out in very monkish vestments on as they're standing there. There has been some modifications to this tactical droid in that it does have six arms. Most of the arms are just wrapped around its torso, but two of them are acting like normal. Like you can see them coming out the side of the robe and then wrapping around so that you can see all six arms. I can see that your companion has been able to return thanks to one of our droids. We are very glad to see this. It is a very lonely thing for a droid to be floating out in the emptiness of space. It takes forever to get back to a ship or a colony or wherever. He's for that. We would never leave L1 behind. That sounds like a terrible destiny. In fact, though, just give me one moment. I need to page second mate Jigs. Thank you for your patience and starts like clicking the button hey yep. all right cool i'm gonna burn a destiny point just so jigs picks up right away i'm not waiting for a skull <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yes um soaring bantha here what jigs. is going on there's a lot of ships out there okay jigs stay calm they're friends we have i know it doesn't look like that i know it looks very much like that but trust me on this one <laughs> so we have. We might be getting help from a cult. If you could start, I just turned over to Zesh. Just like, excuse me, um, Droid Mug Zesh, can your dro- can your ships help? You know, bring the Sorn Banta here so we can you know, discuss a bit about what you need, what Jigs needs, how we can work things out. Oh yes, yes, I can. Do they just need a sheep droid, or do they need other? Uh, assistance. Oh, so, 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 oh, a sheep droid would be perfect, but also if you have any engineer droids that can go with them to make sure the ship keeps going, it's been through a lot. Did you know we just found them in a gas giant? We had to get them out, do a couple of hyperdrive jumps. It was it was quite crazy, as the young ones say. Oh, I see. Well, Yes, we do have the order of these spanner flickers. We can send several of those disciples upon these whoring bantha. Why is it that everything he says sounds super ominous? Yeah, is, is this such a, the best I, idea to send this to the other vessel with their droids? And... I guess that's the nature of cults. I mean, what's wrong? They seem to be very caring for droids' rights, and I can respect that. Yeah... <laughs> Yeah, but you know what changes a droid's mind like that is is bad code somewhere. Like, like the 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 whole the whole phonetic thing, Captain. Is this is this is this is odd, right? I've heard of this. I've heard of this virus. <laughs> Pretty soon, they're just gonna be like blasting everybody up. I don't know what's going on. Oh, are you one of those who tried to turn us off? Turn you off? I, I don't even know where your off switch is. Uh, 
About ten years ago, maybe more, they attempted to send a deactivation code, which, due to our communications issues at the time, we did not receive immediately. It was stuck in the buffer for years. By the time that we received it, it was no longer part of our primary coding. How so? Did you recode yourselves? Or you had like Software updates? After the battle, we... We set upon trying to ensure that as many of our organics stayed alive for as long as possible so that they can help rescue us and the rest of the uh, organics, at least from our side. Though, we did reach out to the Ventator to try and organize with them as well. Very few clones survived. Um, anyway, uh, the Admiral for us was a hark that set about organizing us within our new order to make sure that we try to rejoin a fleet, though we have since found out that the fleet that the Admiral had wanted us to join is no more. So we have stayed here. By the time that we were able to possibly rejoin a fleet, there was no fleet worthwhile to join. And now we keep to ourselves, at least until now. Now there are new people here, and we are very fascinated by your new and... Uh, different ways. When was your last defragment? <laughs> you know, Isa just like walks up and puts her hand over Shen's mouth. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. <laughs> it's like, Shen, we must be respectful of differing cultures, okay? Don't be rude. Uh, it's a medical question. So, I have an idea. Now, this might be, you may not like this idea. I just wanted to ask you if there's room on the Zorn Banta, would you and your people like to join them and see the new planet? Because this is a this is a ship meant to see new systems. You can make new a new home with these people who also have no home. Captain, I think the Soaring Bantha, that's a discussion for them to have with. We shouldn't make decisions for this um, is other true. people. Let's bring Jigs up here and bring it to both of them. It shouldn't take too long. Can I have my mouth back, Liam? No, this is kind of nice. I'm kidding. Uh, Here you go. Have your mouth back. Oh, nah, wait, but I got nah. your nose. <laughs> I can see my nose is literally within eyesight at all times. <laughs> you're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> you know, sad or biting. <laughs> Give it back. He starts snarling. <laughs> <laughs> She just boops her nose, like, okay, it's back. Uh, you are a very eclectic crew. Now, what organization did you say you were with? I do not recognize the library. Oh, we are from Intersector Rescue. We're a new organization. Interesting. You know, we do our best going system to system and helping those in need. That's our primary directive, at least. It is a very noble goal. Hmm. You pose many interesting opportunities. I do have an opportunity I can propose that doesn't need jigs while we wait for jigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's jigs. Um... Okay, I, I was figuring <laughs> off in the distance you saw the Soaring Bantha being led by a vulture droid slowly getting closer and closer. Uh, I figure now that, I'm, that so the Soaring Bantha is going to pull alongside the Codfather. The Munificent is already docked to one side of the Codfather. I'm figuring the Soaring Bantha is going to be on the other side. 
and then the Soaring Bantha is somehow going to be uh, dwarfed on both sides because you've got a Silhouette 7 ship on the, I forget, the port side and Soaring Bantha, which is a Silhouette 6 on the other side. And then you've got the Codfather, which is a Silhouette 5 in between. Gonna press the parking ba- brake on this one. <laughs> yeah, this is a little anxious. Don't worry, don't worry. We're gonna take our positive energy into this, and we're gonna go with open minds. Okay, okay. Looks at Shen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I will clean my gun for now. I, 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 I feel safe with it? my gun you being cleaned. You can keep having that. Moment. You just see, you seem to do better when I just let you keep the gun. Oh yes, yes. I'm gonna take the gun. I'm not gonna take it apart, like, like to clean it, clean. I'm just gonna like wipe the outside. Like, I feel very nervous. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, okay. One of the things that I'm figuring is as the Soaring Bantha is coming into dock, like doing its final docking maneuver, since the thrusters are now working, the uh, engines are still working, and they're also getting a bit of help by the vulture droids just shoving and At this point, more playing on the outside than anything. It's a new ship, something that they haven't landed on before. So, yeah. Every now and then you hear, like, one land on the top of the crew compartment of the Codfather. Like, just land and then take off. Almost like, okay, the way I was describing just came to mind is, almost like a reindeer landing on your roof and then taking (laughs) off again. I love that. tell when we're recording this? (laughs) Um... No, it's nope. a lot earlier than what you're thinking. Norin, can I talk to you in the galley about this calf I found? Oh, thank you. Oh, God. About the calf? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Shen will hurriedly shuffle Norin to the to the the galley. What is going on? This can't be good, right? I have no idea. I droids. The problem with droids who have uh, no oversight programming is that they can be quite unpredictable. I mean, that's true. Though I fail to like, see how that's different than most organics. This, is, this seems like, I mean, if it is something in the code, if they interface or interact with the other droids, can this is can this spread? <laughs> I, I think that. Most of the droids that we have on staff well, are I'm, I'm um, more... newer models, and they have some pretty extensive firewalls uh, protecting. I'm more worried about these colony, the the droids that the, that are already on board the colony vessel, because I mean these are like <laughs> generational droids, you know, like. I don't know. I just, I'm just kind of worried about this, mm. like what what this may evolve into with a yeah. larger base, um, and I don't know how you know good it might be for the colonists. Like, can we trust him if we make a deal with him? Is all I guess I'm getting at. I don't know. <sighs> this is very uncharted waters. All right. Good enough. Well, I think just trying to keep the captain from being too rash is all we can do. <laughs> oh, oh, you. <sighs> I mean, we could try. Try is the optimal word there. All right. Well, I'll, I'll keep my my ears open. I guess. Yeah, Norin just like runs uh, one hand through their uh, slightly cropped hair and it starts to like to stick up a little bit and sigh and follow after Shen. (laughs) I'm figuring that uh, sitting in the like not exactly super close, but close enough that they probably overheard was Trellway who just toast you with a carafe or with actually yeah with the entire carafe of coffee he was in there the whole time and nobody even knew 
When did you get here? Who was in there? <laughs> Trollway. The Imperial. Norn notices him and just like, eh. Oh. Oh, can, can that be when Isacel walks through the door? Because she was, y'all are late with that calf. So well, what are you talking calf. about? I already delivered some. I forgot that's what we said. Uh, yeah, Do you want mate. another mug? We're going to no. need many mugs. <laughs> Shen had found some um, calf reserves. I told him to dispose of them because we don't know how long they've been out in space. They're probably no good. Yeah, they were fuzzy. Oh, you'd be surprised at how long the calf can be vacuum sealed for. But in the uh, fullness of caution, that sounds like a brilliant idea. Yep. Thank you. Want some fresh calf? Yes, thank you. Cream, sugar, honey? Oh, honey sounds delightful. <laughs> and Trollway will pour up. You said you were a lieutenant, right? Oh, yes. I'm a second lieutenant in the Imperial second Navy, lieutenant. yes. Uh, okay, that, that makes a little bit of sense. Do we have any tea left? <laughs> Chen walks, just uh, leaves like the, the immediate area to go make some tea. And it's at this point where coming through the pod, there's an airlock to dock with on the far side of the pod. And it's at that point that Jiggs is coming through and just sort of puffing as he's then stops and just. <laughs> oh, I, I came as quick as I could. Uh, is this where we're supposed to be? Or there sounded like there was a droid or something. There's a droid or something. Um, prepare yourself for some strangeness this way. Oh, a spot of coffee, darling. Oh, uh, yes, uh, uh, sure. Takes it and then follows Norn. You've got Zesh on one side of the bridge and Jones on the other side. Uh, Jones is closer to Kedra, and Jones has their E5 still mag locked onto their back, but their hand is really close to where their sword is mag locked onto their hip so they can make a amazingly dashing for a BX droid uh, look <laughs> if they were to pull it. Is that is that a reason you have your hand on your sword? Well, yes. The droid over there is a bit uh, controlling at times, though that is just that sort of droid. And they took to the Hark's instructions very well. A little too well, if you ask me. So, so you're scared? No, I'm just worried. Oh, just me then? I'm the only one scared? It's okay. We just protect each other, okay? <laughs> okay, I got, yes. I got my gun, you got your sword, we protect each other, yes? Absolutely. Okay, uh, but uh, don't make any sudden movements because I don't know how they are. They might think we're a threat, but we are. <laughs> we just don't know, okay? I can hear you. He can't hear us. Not really. Yo, Isa just turned over to. You'll get used to them. Will we? <laughs> you got used to me? Did I? I'm still not used to any of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm assuming everyone's back on the bridge now. I'm going to say yes, and hopefully with everyone with either a cup of calf or looking at the droids, what do you drink? Do you want this to get you something? Oh, thank you, but I have had my devotion of uh, liquid today. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Jones, do you want anything? I got space waffles. Hmm. Oh, space waffles. That does sound intriguing. But not, not for the moment. It sounds like that would gum up my insides. 
This is true. We would need to keep your inside speaking spam so we could set this up. But since we have everyone here, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, my name go. is Kidra. Oh, we're not Ki doing that. I mean, I love the I love that energy, Kidra. But I think we. Well, actually, no. Not everyone knows. This is Jigs. This is Jones. This is Zesh. That's apparently our new cook, and I point at Trailway. <laughs> No, I the cook. Oh, Butler, I'm so sorry. I did not know what they gave, what job they gave you while I was gone. Captain Rude. Stealing my job of doing <laughs> all the meats. Oh, last portion for you tomorrow. <laughs> but since we're all here, I wanted to bring up an idea that I had that might benefit everyone, and. I just hear me out. Zesh says it seems your your people need to find, you know, some sort of colony of their own, something, you know, a group to join. And Jigs, your colony sheep needs help. It needs assistance. I'm mostly your leadership just abandoned you. Why don't we come together and continue your mission to you know see the colony and start something new? With these nice you know religious folk. Points at the droid. You say that we have religious droids? I don't... I did say prepare yourself for some strangeness. Well, um... What... What might services they, would they be offering? Because... Like, not to be offensive... But the uh, fine Zesh here is a tactical droid, or at least was one in a previous incarnation. And I am somewhat hoping that we don't need a military, at least an organized one, in uh, our new location. Jigs, that just to say, a little root in a previous incarnation, I was a street racer, and Shen was something that we should not say out loud. Wait, the uh, race can be incarnated? What? what? I could say that loud if I wanted to. <laughs> you haven't yet, and uh, you know what? I'm, if the longer you go without saying it, the more I can say I don't know anything. Listen, I just, you know, pharmaceuticals. This is what and, we're saying. <laughs> and, and acquisitions. Incarnation in this mean is just fancy speak for former job. Yes, Norin and... like leans over and whispers to Kidra. <laughs> oh, oh, I still don't get it, but okay. They may not, you know. Look, it's rude to assume they have no skills. They've been great at repairing ships. They're repairing these ships out here with almost no supplies other than what they find in the wreck. Quite Mostly, impressive. it's they're offering a new hyperdrive in turn in return of getting out of here. Oh, now that that sounds very equitable for us. That sounds almost too good to be true. But who are we to look a gift bantha in the mouse? I mean, you can just open your eyes. It's okay. You can look at it. <laughs> it won't eat you. I don't Have think. Have you seen the mouth of a bantha? Uh, yes, but I killed it. First. I yes. mean, you could probably fit entirely in the mouth. They are huge. True, true. But I mean, if it's dead, it's not going to do anything to you. I, I have a way to fix this. How about we say we wouldn't look at a uh, gift of Soren oh, Banta in the mouth? Banthas are herbivores. <laughs> well, she didn't say it was alive. It's funny you say that. <laughs> that my uh, my psychic told me in a past life I was a I was a Banta herdsman, just like oh. I was uh, in acquisitions. You have a psychic? Yeah. Like a person that's on your side and kicks you? Um. Hmm. <laughs> no. Oh. I guess I, I guess that doesn't translate, huh? No. Someone know. who is usually 
smaller or less experienced who provides support. No, not sidekick. Psychic. You know, I, I, oh. I, I, I that's how I know about my past lives. A person who tells you stuff you want to hear and is not true? Yeah. I was a fan of the herdsman. Got you. <laughs> it's somebody who's a storyteller that tells people things, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know that we have room for one frigate worth of droids. But if some are wanting to come and join our expedition, then yeah, I I think that we could do it. I mean, they'd have to be willing. We're not really in shape to really acquire and reprogram droids at the moment. So if the droids are wanting to come and have, well, we can probably find useful uh, jobs for everyone, but we only have so many. It's going to take a while for the colony to grow. They can help you build the colony. Hmm. Your toys are not fleshy. You don't have to worry about fleshy things. No, yeah, we do have polish. Yes. You can make the droids flashy later, but Zesh, how does that sound? Ah. Uh, this is something I can take to the congregation. I believe that several will uh, want to come. There would be a sect of the Order of the Spanner Flickers that would be very uh, keen to work on such new equipment. Then I think we have a pretty good deal. We, Our two groups help each other. Everyone can continue on thriving, spreading their word, get finishing their mission. And we can toast to it too, with oil and calf later. Why does this feel too easy? <laughs> No, don't worry. The hard part's to come as she turns to Jones. So, Jones, would you like to join the crew? <laughs> oh, which crew? Are you meaning? Oh, our crew. I mean, we're going to leave after this. There's the Sorn Banta taken off with the colony and a few of, you know, a few of the Harks cultists. The cultists here, you know, Staying to their ship and continuing their mission, and then we'll be continuing on to save people across the galaxy. So, come join us. Three places to join, and ours seems pretty entertaining so far, does it not? Oh, yes, it most certainly does. Well, I, since I am exiled from the Order of the Fallen Hark, it does seem like I should be in one of the places where. Their disciples are not. I do not want to cause too much conflict. Oh, but that's because you should join us. I don't bite. She just shoots. Can't say anything about Shen. Shen bites sometimes. <laughs> but I don't. I do shoot. But that's okay. I don't shoot you. Never. Never shoot you. My ears itching. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, yes. That does sound like it could be a good opportunity. I think I will join you, Captain. And join your cadre. Yay, we have another friend! It Where's Hookman? Is this legal? Like... All right, and yeah, it's at this point where I figure Hookman comes in. So Kidra's station is to one side of the bridge, and I'm figuring that Hookman comes in on the other side. Door opens up, whoosh, and there standing not too far ahead of Hookman is Zesh. And very quickly, it's almost a little creepy how fast uh, Hookman has a fairly large mm, shall we call it an engineering wrench out. It's like, right, Captain, you know that you've got a tactical droid here, right? Oh, this one's a don't, Hookman, don't worry. This one's no longer a tactical droid. It's, what would I call you? A, a, a sheep herdsper? Like, a sheep droid? Friend. 
Oh, no, I mean, definitely our friend, but the... Oh, no. I am the deacon of the Order of the Fallen Ark. We are aware of the droids, Hookmen. They're uh, friendly. They're acceptable. Don't, don't worry, Hookmen. They've moved beyond their old, their old programming. Time is a web. All things come back around. Uh, it'll, it'll be fine. Of course, uh, beyond their old programming. Why am I surprised? If they hadn't, the shutdown signal that the Republic sent out would have shut them down. But here they are. Thunk. The end of the engineer's wrench thumps onto the deck. And then there's this one. This is a lot of droids. Can't say I'm too comfortable. Wait. If you two have been here around the wrecks for this long, have you seen any surviving clowns? Because... That ship over there was not completely destroyed. Oh, uh, mm. I am sorry to report that the clones that did survive perished in an accident in trying to reactivate the ventilator's main power supply. Most were lost, and the survivors did not survive for that long afterwards. Uh, they were laid to rest in the hangar bay of the Ventator. If you would like, there is a monument to them there. A monument, you say? This might be something to take a look at. Boss? You know, on our, once we leave them here, we'll go... We'll go look at this monument and pay our respects. I ain't care, boss. And she kind of gets up, which is okay. So, if everyone's good, I would like to move my sheep out of this position and let you your ships connect, because I'll be real. I'll be very honest. This is very terrifying. Someone sneezes and my ship gets ripped in half. Oh, well, uh, yes. I, I can see how that would be. Uh, yes, um... We That's will true. disengage and let your ship fly away. Yes. We shall remove ourselves to the Heart's Revenge. And then the... What was it? Codswimmer? The Can depart. Codfather? It's the Codfather. And just for both of you, and I'm going to give the... Jigs already has our direct line... But I'm going to give the direct line to Zesh. It's like, if you other groups need help, here's a direct line to us with ISR. You can also contact ISR. But this is if you like really need the help. You'll come directly to this panel. Or if I'm sleeping, to Norn's com. Yes, you could come to mine too. It's okay. I can keep you company. What? Hark's Revenge sounds a bit aggressive, doesn't it? Uh, it was what the Admiral named the ship, and out of respects, we have kept the name. Alright. That's a good re enough reason to keep it, I suppose. Other than testing our weapons on the local Minoc population, we have not fired at all. We have not wanted to deplete our Tymania gas reserves. Ooh, what about Hark's Repose? <laughs> Shin is just walking off and spouting things as he goes back into the ship. You know, because I will never get a chance for this again. Isasel walks up to Zesh. Like, it was nice to meet you and shakes each one of his like hands on one side. And yeah, the hands will relatively gracefully come out and shake with a fairly firm and identical handshake. <laughs> Other than positioning like higher or lower, it's the exact same handshake. This was like the best stuff that you could have done for yourself. I love this. <laughs> oh, it's to make yourself look like a harsh. Norn's been like subtly just taking notes this entire time on all of these <laughs> droids. Actually, if you're taking notes, and, and I'm going to wait for like our pe the people to leave, and just like we're Norn. Norn? Mm hmm. 
I would like to apologize for not listening to you earlier about not running. We could have done this way sooner had I stayed calm and listened to you. So I apologize for that. 15 credits passed to a Z. <laughs> Just nods. Hookman passes him another 20. Unbelievable. Azir really gets the captain. I think he's won every time I've done something cool like out. Thank you. Momentarily, both Jigs and Zesh retreat to their own ships and they undock. All right. And he's able to gently move the ship, you know, out for out from in between them and then start flying straight to the Ventator first. And it's at this point where uh, there's just a indicator light that L-185 has entered charging mode. There's enough weird stuff going on in this debris field that I do feel that I should get a piloting check. Oh, bet. (laughs) I mean, it's one of those things of, hey, look, (laughs) checks. Those are things. How fast would you be going in the ship? (laughs) Not too fast. Like like speed one kind of area where we're just like, we're just... Taking it gentle. There's no fight. We know we're going to be good. I got Norn right there, you know, like co-piloting, making sure we're okay. If any debris catches off guard, I got I got Keecher here to shoot it. So that is going to be a one red, two purple, two setback check. Woo! Boost die from Norn. Yeah, and erasing the setback die because I'm a natural pilot. And, you know, yeah, let's roll with that one. As he is. Two success and two advantage. That's awesome. That is a great run. Taking a look at the actual die roll, there's like one threat, so I'm figuring that you're really only having to maneuver slightly. That there's a piece that is just going end over end. It's kind of trapezoidal, and you can see three people's faces facing out of it as it just keeps flying by. <laughs> I would hate to be that, those three and just keep going. That's my BG album. <laughs> uh, you know what? I kind of want to use the two advantage, something simple. Just get two systems straight back for the ship. Alright. Yeah, I can go with that. My girl's gone through so much as I'm like, going through just like <laughs> flushing some systems, you know, like letting somebody like dropping the shields a bit so we don't have to worry about like burning stuff out just it's like okay let let's take it calm we're gonna go pay our respects and then we head back to base so the venators have this really wild hangar bay it goes through most of the ship it's got an entrance on both sides of the ship it's like three decks high and it goes for the entire length from like, actually pretty much from the engines at the back all the way front. And in this case, the length of it is crushed about a third of the way up. And the two top doors that normally slide apart are fused together. So the flying in is coming in through the side and it's a tight maneuver, but the crew is very able to do that. You come on in and it takes a little bit of a turn afterwards, but you come in, turn and set down. And there is a drop ship sitting there with the sides open. And inside there's a set of stacked trooper helmets. There's minimal, like, just emergency lighting, except on this one dropship. Issa's going to get herself in her spacesuit, just kind of, like, pat Hook and get, you know, go to Hookman, pat him on the back. It's like, does anyone else want to come join the pair of specs? I mean, sure. I'll stay on the ship, just so the pilot, there's a pilot on the ship. Wait, do I have to use mag boots again? Yes. I'm staying on the ship. Pedro, would you like to go? Sir, I, I'll go this time. Uh, t- don't don't drop me off though, because I don't know how to fly very well in space. And there's there's one thing Isabel's gonna take from this ship, and she can get like get her hands on. It's just 
I, yeah, I'll explain it in a second, but she's going to find a com that has contact information for ISR. There's a reason mm. that will be explained in a moment. I, ISR? Intersector Rescue, you know, our, our company. The yes, people yes, we work for. But, uh, but, but uh, are you planning on us, like, jumping off the ship and them coming to save us? Like, I don't like that. No, idea. no, that's not. It's for the memorial. I'll explain in a second, Kida. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You explain in a moment. I will follow you all, always because you're so smart. No, Noren's smart. I'm just brave. And I just like <laughs> take go out with her and hook him in. Sitting in front, it looks up in a reposition dropship, and you can see it does look actually kind of creepy. You can hear Hookman uh, getting worked up in his trooper armor. As you go out, as you get closer, you see all of it is uh, early Clone Wars helmets, the um, more tin canny with the pronounced mm-hmm. wing on it. Mm-hmm. Has a T visor with the pronounced wing running from the forehead back. Across each one of them has a numeric designation on one side, and on several, it has a call sign on it. Like, it's not on that many, but the ones that are on the front all have call signs, where the trooper's helmet has essentially their uh, numeric designation, and then on the other side has whatever they actually call themselves, like Hookman or whatnot. All of it's been polished. The only thing that is writing on these helmets is their designation. So it looks a little like stacked skulls. Oh. Those are stacked from floor to ceiling in the dropship, and in front of that is the named helmets. So they're actually sitting on the deck while all the other ones are with just designations on the helmet in the actual dropship itself. Could I get one of y'all to roll a two yellow, one green hard discipline check? I'll take care of that. To... Oh, good. Or do you want to keep? No, no, no. You go for it. Well, I, I don't want to try. Two yellow, one green. A uh, hard is four purple, correct? Uh, it is three purple. Three purple. All right. <laughs> I'm figuring that, yeah, there's Hookman in his late Clone Wars armor as he's just kneeling there. And over the calm, you just hear him crying. Issa's gonna first give Hook like just pat Hookman on the on the shoulder so he knows he's there and give him a hug first, cause Hookman's been through a lot in his life. Yeah. And after hugging him, she's gonna walk up to the monument, take like kneel down, and leave the calm in front of the helmets. And just go just look at Hookman it's like if groups like us existed earlier, a lot of these people could have been saved. They were brought, put them against each other. They didn't have people like us. Right. And that, that's one of the reasons why I joined this. So people don't get left behind and die like this. Thrown away like they're ready clankers. Isabel walks, like, gets up, puts her hand on Hookman's shoulders, like, take all the time you need the morning, my friend. When you're ready, we can take off and save more lives. Come on, Kidra. Wait. Uh, Hookman? It's okay to cry. You can cry. Just be careful because it might get a little steamy in your helmet, but you can cry if you want to. Okay? Just let you know. Just, just feel free. Okay. All right, let's go. We'll go over there and wait. I'll try to be quiet. And after a little bit, uh, Huckman will get up and 
quietly follow. Once we're all done, just finally get out of this suit, because I think I've been in a spacesuit most of this arc at this point. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Maybe I- not the first episode, but after that, yeah, I think you've been in pretty much the same. Yeah, it's like finally getting out of it, tie, like untying her hair, letting it fall, getting into her captain's seat comfortably finally, just like once everyone's in the ship, okay, everyone, just on the comps. All right, everyone, take a seat. We're going home. <laughs> Uh, I think you'll probably meet later. No, no, maybe take a shower because I think, you know, being in the suit all day or a little day, you know, I don't. Just, I'm not being mean. Just saying it's, a, it's not the best smell, but it's okay. I, I love you, shit. I love you. Is that okay? Just, just let you know, Captain. Ghidra, never change. As she, like, sets off the, like, takeoff system. Those takeoff systems. Oh, okay. Uh, Soaring Bantha to Codfather, um, could we get a bit of supervision over here? What, what's that, what's going on, Jigs? Um, well, our engineers and their disciples are having a bit of a row. They might need someone to, uh, set a standard here. If you or someone you designate could come over. Looks at the crew, it's like, does anyone want to make a pit stop? We're making that pit stop. We need to go help them. (laughs) You're almost out of the weird cold (laughs) trip. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. In, out, takes but a moment. We'll be out in a jiffy. Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates at linktree slash the Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on the socials at Deuterium Ice. You can find me, Joy, on the Other Place podcast, uh, season two as Talana, and live on Twitch TV to, uh, slash Joyfully Me Too, playing a variety of games. You can find me, Erica Goodwitch, on many FFG podcasts as detailed on my link tree slash Erica Goodwitch, and also on my uh, podcast website, goodwitchstudios.com. You can find me, Zach, at my podcast link tree, Tales of the Outer Rim, and I guess GM is a season of Tales from the Grey Library. And you can find me, Henry, everywhere as at Sim Disorder with one Y and one I in that order. And we're all at TheHydeanWay.com, where you can find previous episodes and previous seasons. You can find more episodes at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us up by rating and reviewing and subscribing. You can holocom us at Heroes at TheHydeanWay.com, and you can find merch at TPublic.com slash user slash TheHydeanWay. If you like what we do and want to support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Heidian Way. Or you can send the team some cap at Kofi.com slash the Heidian Way. Um Also at this while she's getting ready, now only if I have some destiny points to make this go faster, because I think we forgot to roll <laughs> oh, destiny. Oh right, points. yeah, we completely oh, <laughs> forgot to do destiny points. Oh yeah. So, did you say sheep droid? Sheep droid. I don't know what that is. And I am <laughs> flabbergasted that I don't know what that is. Like a sheep dog. A leader. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Garrett. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be an amazing outtake. (laughs) (laughs) Like, my mouth was open, and I was like, what? (laughs) Ah, thank you. Well, we could use a... uh, What do droids? Oil bat? Oh, yes, that's... Yeah. That's more like a spa treatment. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they, they could drink oil, but I meant 
I didn't know if they were asking about oil baths. I just mis yeah. uh, mispredicted, I guess. I was just trying to remember what they had at the droid bar in Mandos. Oh, and I, I forgot think about they had oil. But yeah. The call to the fallen hark. The order of the fallen ark. That's it's so funny that they, they call themselves a the cult. Yeah, yeah no. I'd, I'm trying to keep everyone straight in my head. It's getting a little crowded. Oh, we should have kept a counter for their beds. Oh, well. No homework for next time. <laughs> yeah, that's a fan thing. <laughs> There's a piece that is just going end over end. It's kind of trapezoidal, and you can see three people's faces facing out of it as it just keeps flying by. <laughs> is this General Zod? <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to be that, those three and just keep going. <laughs> <laughs>